Hey y'all, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that connects you with the best movies on streaming, and today we're talking about the 20 best sci-fi movies you can currently catch on Netflix. So this is going to be a list of 20 movies currently included with Netflix. I'm going to spend about a minute per movie telling you why you should watch it with no spoilers. I will say there are movies missing from this list. Movies like Inception, Freaks, Code 8. It was a really cool one on Netflix, but I talked about those in some past videos. I will link to those in the top pinned comment down below. So go down there if you want even more sci-fi recommendations on Netflix. This video is sponsored by Magic Spoon, but I'll be telling you more about them later in the video. Let's go ahead and get started with my number 20 pick, which is a foreign language sci-fi vampire flick. Blood Red Sky is about a woman on a night flight who appears to have a medical issue more deadly for the passengers than for herself. What I really liked about Blood Red Sky is the setup is fairly simple and vampire movies are a dime a dozen, but Blood Red Sky did some interesting things with it, especially for a Netflix original. There were multiple oh shit moments in this that I did not see coming, and it gets much wilder than I would have expected again for a Netflix original. I mean, yes, it's essentially vampires on a plane, but I'm telling you, this is much better than Snakes on a Plane was back when that came out. This is just a cool, dark, sort of violent, bloody vampire flick that again, all takes place on an overnight flight. Now, I did not mean for overnight flight to rhyme, and I certainly didn't mean for it to rhyme with the title of my next film, Slight. This is the directorial debut for J.D. Dillard. He went on to do another sci-fi flick called Sweetheart, which I've also recommended, but this fall, his next film, his biggest budget project to date called Devotion, is a Korean War fighter pilot movie, and it looks really sick. So now is a great time to tap into his early work. This is done on a low budget. It's about a young man who is becoming a street magician, except he's got a little bit more up his sleeve than just sleight of hand. At the same time though, he's trying to kind of get out of the street life and he's having a hard time with it. So it's a couple of different movies. It's kind of a genre bender. I will say the sci-fi elements in Slight are pretty slight compared to a lot of the other ones on this list, but it's still a really nice indie flick and it's early work from a director who is certainly on his way up. My next pick is one of the only sci-fi flicks that the legendary Jet Li ever did. It's called The One. Now the interesting thing about The One is it deals with these parallel dimensions and different versions of yourself and it makes good use of that setup. There are some production issues where it looks like it's a little bit lower budget movie than it probably was, mainly because it came out all the way back in 2001. In fact, Jason Statham is featured in this movie back when he still had some hair and before he was really a household name. So he's got a smaller role in this, which is always kind of cool to see. And you get to see Jet Li fighting himself I would imagine most people who are really into martial arts movies have seen this, but even if you're not, this still does make a pretty cool sci-fi action flick. All right, now I know I will get flack for my next pick, but just hang with me for a minute. I've got a reason for recommending the remake of Total Recall. Now, I am a big fan of the Arnold Schwarzenegger original, and I will agree that this is not a good remake of that movie. However, there are a lot of elements I really did enjoy about Total Recall. Again, it is just not a good representation of the original work. I mean, for a movie where they spend half of it on Mars to remake it and not ever go to Mars, it's just baffling to me. So as it stands, it's just kind of a cool sci-fi flick. You almost have to force yourself to forget that it's a Total Recall remake. That said, Colin Farrell's got some great moments in this, but so do Kate Beckinsale and Jessica Biel. I've always liked Jessica Biel in action movies. I wish she had not really stopped doing them like she has, but Brian Cranston is in this, and even a good role from Ethan Hawke. A short one, but it's interesting to see him crop up in the middle of this movie. And visually, it's pretty stunning. I mean, I realize a lot of it's animated, but there's still a lot of cool stuff going on in Total Recall. If you never gave it a chance, watch it. Just do your best to forget that it's a remake. 
Far and away, the scariest movie on this sci-fi list is Dark Skies. Dark Skies is an alien invasion movie, sort of in the vein of M. Night Shyamalan's Signs. It's fairly slow paced, but incredibly creepy. Yet this one goes much harder into the horror territory. In fact, it sort of sits on your basic horror movie template. You know, J.K. Simmings plays the expert that comes in and explains what's going on. The basic template, however, Dark Skies is really well executed. Like I said, it's incredibly creepy. It's got some great moments in it, and it is really spine tingling and entertaining. Again, for something that's sort of a templated horror movie, they really did do a good job with this one. Okay, another one that I think was underappreciated back when it was released is Neil Bloomkamp's Chappie. Speaking of remakes though, this movie is basically like a hard R-rated remake of Short Circuit from the 80s. Part of the problem though with Neil Bloomkamp's filmography specifically is that District 9 was so well done and so well executed, he's really had a hard time topping it. I enjoyed Elysium, I enjoyed Chappie even more, but they're just not as good as District 9, and I think critics and audiences have been largely disappointed. However, you watch Chappie as a short circuit remake, and this is a bonkers flick. I would even agree that Chappie's voice and personality can be a little bit grating, but you get Hugh Jackman doing a great villain character that's a little bit ambiguous, to me though, Chappie's got an overall really interesting aesthetic that goes hand in hand with Bloomkamp's other movies and I'm just a fan of his work. I think Chappie might be his second best movie to date, but I do have a smaller Neil Bloomkamp project as an honorable mention on this list because it's not technically a movie. We'll get to that a little bit later. Keanu Reeves, someone who does not do a lot of sci-fi movies, actually has two sci-fi movies currently included with Netflix, Replicas and Johnny Mnemonic. But for my money, I'm gonna go with Johnny Mnemonic. This is a futuristic cyberpunk flick released in the mid 90s and it looks like it. This thing oozes mid 90s. It is a cool role for Keanu Reeves and a pretty interesting story. It's not just mind numbing action. It's actually got kind of a neuromancer thing, but this is also a highly consumable sci-fi action romp type thing. It's not incredibly deep. And again, it just oozes that 90s aesthetic that I absolutely love. My next pick is easily one of the biggest budget movies on this list and the only superhero movie on this list as well, The Amazing Spider-Man. This is the first of two done with Andrew Garfield and this is easily the better one. In fact, this one was pretty successful and they put so much money and characters and villains into the sequel that it did not work at all, but this first one I think does work pretty well. The only real problem with it is that because they didn't carry it on, there's a lot of story elements that get left hanging by the end, but the aesthetic of this one I think looks great. I think the villain's great. Dennis Leary's got a pretty interesting role in this as well. Emma Stone is good in this, and Andrew Garfield I think was a good Peter Parker in Spider-Man. Just the direction they went with this series I think ultimately didn't work. This movie though stands on its own really well, and it's one of the darker Spider-Man Man movies you're gonna see. But speaking of people with powers in dark movies, one that I think is highly underrated and has been for decades now is Hollow Man starring Kevin Bacon. I say Kevin Bacon, but because he's invisible for the majority of the movie, I wanna say Elizabeth Shue is probably on screen more. I've always been a fan of hers, and you get an early role from Josh Brolin in this. He's not on screen nearly as much as he would be today, but it's still a good character for him, and there are some fantastic effects in this movie that still hold up today. Not all of them do, but a lot of them do, and I think you'll be surprised. This is just kind of a fun, wild horror flick that is not too scary for big scaredy cats. This is more of the haunted house, jump scare kind of thing, but what I really like about Hollow Man is it's not just a horror movie. It's a really interesting sci-fi flick, too. Not super deep or anything like that. Everything's pretty surface level, but it's fun and entertaining to watch and it does get really wild and it does get pretty grim at times, but it never pushes that limit too far, making it much more accessible than a lot of the other horror movies that I'll recommend on this channel. 
My next pick is the most recent feature film from two of my favorite directors, Moorhead and Benson. They are famous for releasing movies like The Endless, Resolution. They directed half of the Moon Knight series on Disney+, Plus, which I really enjoyed. So I'm a fan of all of their work, and their biggest budget movie to date is Synchronic. Now part of the reason it's their biggest budget is because they got some big stars in this. They got Anthony Mackie, Jamie Dorner, and some really interesting visual effects, but for the most part, most of the interesting elements in Synchronic are all story driven. They're not driven by the visual effects. Those just sort of support the story. This one's got a very interesting concept as well. It's about this hallucinogenic drug that may or may not actually transport you to another time. So it's pretty trippy stuff and it does have sort of a dark brooding nature. Not only that, but they went back and re-edited this movie before releasing it and gave it sort of a disjointed structure that further supports the story they're trying to tell. So for a sci-fi flick you've probably never seen, included with Netflix, this one's gonna be hard to beat. Now before moving on with the rest of the movies on this list, I do wanna tell you about today's sponsor, Magic Spoon, because it's one of my favorite ways to treat myself. And what's so great about Magic Spoon is it is a guilt-free treat. That's because Magic Spoon is a nostalgic, sweet, familiar tasting cereal that has zero grams of sugar, a whopping 13 grams of protein and only four net carbs per serving, making it a fantastic high protein, no sugar snack that is also gluten-free, grain-free, and soy-free. I have spent about the last year and a half packing on more muscle than I've ever had in my life, and to do that, I need a high-protein diet, and I can only eat so much meat and greens during the day. Magic Spoon not only tastes delicious, but it is a wonderful reprieve from protein shakes. I like a good protein shake, but eating a sweet, nostalgic cereal in place of a protein shake late at night sometimes Times that's guilt-free, it's really hard to beat. And right now with my viewers, go to the link in the video description below, or you can just go to magicspoon.com and use the code FLICK at checkout, and you'll save $5 off your order. If you're trying to cut out sugar, but you still get sweet cravings from time to time, like all of us, Magic Spoon is a great thing to keep in the cabinet. Again, go to the link in the description, or use the code FLICK, and you're gonna save $5 off your first order with Magic Spoon. It's fantastic stuff. But speaking of fantastic stuff, let's go ahead and move on with the rest of the movies on this list. My next pick is a dazzling space opera from South Korea. It's called Space Sweepers. Now, this is rated R, but it does kind of have the feeling of a family-friendly movie, but there are some themes and some language from time to time that are really not gonna be good for your kids. That said, this movie reminded me a lot of Guardians of the Galaxy. It's not as witty or as funny, but there is some wit and humor in this movie. But the overall aesthetic, the characters, the spaceships, the entire environment that you're in in this movie feels like it belongs in the Guardians of the Galaxy. And Space Sweepers does feature a good story. Like I said, it is from South Korea. You can watch this one in the original language or dubbed. It has a good dubbed version if you don't do subtitles. But if you just want to watch a fun, wild sci-fi movie that actually does have a decent story, it's not just mindless action, Space Sweepers is a fantastic pick. I should have mentioned that Space Sweepers is a Netflix original, at least it is here in the US. I think it was released theatrically over there, but another Netflix original that could have easily hit the theaters here in the US is Spectral. Tell you to pull out right now. Now this is kind of an early big budget Netflix original movie. This is one of the first ones they promoted as a like Friday release, but that was years ago and I have watched this one and recommended it multiple times over the years. This is one I feel like Netflix could promote today and people would still really enjoy it. The effects are fantastic and the overall aesthetic is really interesting. This movie looks kind of like Black Hawk Down. You're dealing with some soldiers going into what appears to be in an abandoned area and they're running into problems with these specters. Like I said, the aesthetic in this one is amazing. The action is fantastic. James Badgedale leads this one off. Not only is he a great leading character, I'm surprised he's not in more Hollywood movies. I mean, he's among my favorite actors and he carries this movie well. It's got a good supporting cast and 
The concept gets more and more interesting as this movie progresses. I mean, it really is one of the cooler Netflix original sci-fi movies. There are a bunch of them. This is one of the last ones and highest ranked ones featured on this list and one of my favorites that I've ever seen. If you like post-apocalyptic movies or even just the grungy look and feel of Spectral, then I highly recommend checking out Denzel Washington in The Book of Eli. Now, this is one of the bigger budget movies on this list. It did get a big theatrical release. However, if you missed it, not only is this a really slick post-apocalyptic movie directed by the Hughes brothers, but it's basically set up like a Western. And not only is Denzel Washington really good in this per usual, but he does there's a little bit of a magic trick in this movie that's kind of cool to see him pull off. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But on top of all that, Gary Oldman plays a fantastic villain. He is one of the best villain actors of all time, probably second to Vincent Price. And he's a little bit subdued here. It's interesting what he does, and this movie does go in some fantastic directions. If it's been a while since you've seen it, and certainly if you never saw it, I mean really, if you clicked on this video to check out some cool sci-fi on Netflix and you never saw The Book of Eli, make it the first one you watch. Another one I know I'll catch some flack for, and I don't care because I absolutely loved this movie back when it was released, the Steven Spielberg War of the Worlds remake. This is the Tom Cruise version, and I loved a lot of what Spielberg did with this one, mostly the aesthetic and the sound design. I thought the aliens were terrifying at times in this movie, and not because they look scary in any particular way, but just the way Spielberg directed it with these loud trumpet sounds and the lights, and this movie was so immersive to me. I absolutely loved it when I saw it in the theater. I went and saw it multiple times. This is one that probably doesn't work on a really small screen. You need a big screen, dark room, loud speakers, and this movie really does take you on a wild journey. The only real drawback for me is it's PG-13, which I get, it is that type of a movie, but there is so much destruction and mayhem going on that the PG-13 rating kind of hampers this thing a little bit. It seems like it should be a little bit more intense, but that's kind of a nitpick. And I'm someone who loves the original from 1953. I think these two go hand in hand, especially again, for something included on Netflix right now, if it's been a while since you've seen it, to me, this one's just way better than people say it is. All right, my next two picks are Netflix originals that have only been released in the last year or so. One is a really big budget animated movie, The Mitchells vs. The Machines. Is that a burnt orange 1993 station wagon? Or is it? Ah! This was originally scheduled to be a big theatrical release and then because of COVID, uh, the studio sold it off to Netflix and I do think this movie could have done pretty well in theaters. Danny McBride voices the father for this movie and he was also a producer in this movie. It's really funny as a result. It's not only funny, but it's clever and interesting too. And there's a lot of sci-fi elements. Basically, AI robots are taking over the world and this dysfunctional family, the Mitchells, need to band together to try to stop it. And that's a basic setup, but it's filled with a lot of really funny moments and a particularly interesting animation style that looks like it's kind of outlined and hand-drawn, yet it's 3D. But the top two things for this movie are the sense of humor that it has and sort of the over-the-top sci-fi action that is absolutely family-friendly. It's robots blowing up and stuff. It's dazzling and fun to watch and, for the most part, completely safe for kids. Now, having said that, my next pick is not safe for kids whatsoever. Don't watch it with them in the room. This one is Spanish language, but it is dubbed quite well. I'm talking about the platform. In this movie, a man wakes up in a prison cell with one other person, and he soon finds out that a platform lowers covered with food every day. The rub with this one, though, is they're in a tower that has seemingly endless floors, and the people below are left with whatever the people above didn't eat. So the metaphor here is fairly straightforward. The movie does deliver that really well, but then it makes incredibly good use of that metaphor. The story evolves and becomes incredibly intense, especially for something that essentially takes place in one location. Aesthetically, this thing looks good, and more importantly, the story keeps driving forward because you are stuck in this cell with these folks. Visually, 
there's not much going on to distract you. So you really do focus on the story and it's pretty gnarly stuff. I will say this one does end up going into some bizarre directions if the concept wasn't bizarre enough already. So if you find you get aggravated with weird twists and turns in movies and strange endings, this is not gonna be the movie for you. But if you typically like that kind of stuff, this is one of the cooler things that is currently a Netflix original. All right, my next pick also comes from South Korea, but unlike Space Sweepers, this is a dark, grim, twisted sci-fi flick. It's titled The Witch Part One, The Subversion. Now, there is a part two that was finished. I believe it was released in South Korea this year. If not, it's released soon, which means maybe in another six months to a year, we might be able to access it here. That said, part one is really sick. I will say, while it does start off with a bang, the middle of the movie does drag. It is fairly slow because it's part one of a series, potentially, so there's quite a bit of setup. But what you're dealing with is a young girl who I don't necessarily want to say what's up with her, but there's something very strange and there are some people who want to get their hands on her. So this one does become very violent and twisted, but as this thing climaxes, it just crescendos into this wild, violent sci-fi action flick and it's bonker stuff. And above all else, it manages to work. The story works really well, and I cannot wait to see part two. The trailer looks sick. I will say though, you will leave part one feeling pretty satisfied. So I'll say again, while this movie is not the scariest one on the list, it certainly is one of the darker ones and more violent movies you're gonna find on this sci-fi list. All right, my next pick is leaving Netflix on June 30th. You need to watch it before that date. Also, if you're still enjoying this video, please consider clicking that subscribe button and the little bell icon. That way you get notified when these videos release and you don't miss the movies before they're gone. Now, Looper was directed by Ryan Johnson, who has done some fantastic movies, including Brick, The Brothers Bloom, Knives Out, and I know for a lot of you he ruined Star Wars, but I do consider this to be one of his better movies. Movies. And what's really interesting about Looper is while there are elements that are derivative from other time travel movies, for the most part, this is an original piece. It's got an original take on time travel. It's got an original take on some other sci-fi themes that are gonna be familiar, but again, original take, and it's got a really cool aesthetic to it. This is, to me, one of the last really good movies that Bruce Willis did. And I love seeing Joseph Gordon-Levitt in this facial prosthetic. He plays the younger version of Bruce Willis in in this time travel flick, yet he doesn't look the way Bruce Willis looked when he was young, yet he looks like a young version of the character. They did a great job with that. The way he looks can be a little distracting, but I also found it really interesting. To me, this is just a really clever, interesting time travel flick with a lot of elements, again, that are derivative from many things, but as a whole, it doesn't feel like anything else. I mean, honestly, this is one of my favorite sci-fi flicks on the platform. If you've never seen it, Mark your calendar or just put it on tonight. Make it the next thing you watch. Because if you clicked on this and you want to watch some good sci-fi movies on Netflix, this is easily one of the best and you don't have much time left. All right, now we're at my number two pick and I'll go ahead and tell you my number one pick is actually two movies, which means there's three movies left on this list and I've got two honorable mentions before that. So there's quite a bit of video left. That said, I do wanna tell you about the other Neil Bloomkamp project. He is the director of District 9, Elysium, and Chappie. He has something else on Netflix called Oats Studios Volume One. This is a collection of three short films. I believe they're each about 20 minutes, so Overall, it's an hour production, and what it is is sci-fi shorts that his production company created. So there's not much story in each one. In fact, they each have kind of a weird story structure, but visually, each one is stunning, each one has its own aesthetic, and the concepts behind each one are absolutely wild, and I think each one of those could have potentially been turned into a really crazy, epic sci-fi movie. So if you're a fan of any of his three movies, I highly recommend checking out Oat Studios. That's why I'm recommending it so late on this list because I highly recommend it. But at the same time, it is not a movie, so it doesn't actually make the official list. I can say the same thing for Love, Death, and Robots Volume 3. I have been a big fan of this series. It's one of the cooler sci-fi things on Netflix. 
season three just released this month. I liked most of the nine that got released this month, and I've been a big fan of all the others. Each one is different. Some are dark and extremely sexual in nature, and others are kind of funny and fun to watch. Every single one has a different flavor, and they range in time from just being a few minutes long to almost 20 minutes long. So you can sit down and binge watch Love, Death and Robots for hours and be thoroughly entertained and see a bunch of the wildest sci-fi stuff you could possibly catch on Netflix. I highly recommend digging into that series if you haven't done it yet. But that brings us to our number two pick on this list, which is a 90s classic, Gattaca. This stars Ethan Hawke, Uma Thurman, Jude Law, and was written by Andrew Nichol, who's most famous for writing The Truman Show. But this takes place in a future where your genetics determine your path in life. Ethan Hawke plays a genetically inferior man who wants to be an astronaut and needs to pull off a major deception. Keep in mind, this takes place in a future where they're judging everything by your genetics, and so to get around all the technology in this future, requires quite a caper. And that's what this movie is. It's got kind of a neo-noir, futuristic aesthetic. Obviously, all the acting's top-notch, but the concept and the story are really well delivered, which is why this is still held up as a cult classic today. In terms of sci-fi, it is a little bit smaller. I mean, everything on screen is done really well. It looks interesting, but there's not a lot of big effects in this one. This one is more of a drama, but because the story is so good and so interesting, it just, it works on all levels. Now, that brings us to my number one pick, and I could not decide because I haven't actually figured out which of these two movies I like best. That's Blade Runner from 1982 and Blade Runner 2049. Now, I will say, I think Blade Runner 2049 is among the best sequels ever made. I'm not gonna say it's the best, but it's up there in terms of sequels because it was a really good production and it doesn't do the thing that sequels typically do where it rehashes the same story. It actually takes a lot of elements from the original Blade Runner and goes in a completely different direction with them and it all works fairly well. Now, the original from 1982 was directed by Ridley Scott. It is considered widely as one of the greatest sci-fi movies ever made. There are several versions of Blade Runner. Netflix happens to have the final cut, which is one of the better ones to watch. The original studio cut had some things Ridley Scott didn't want included and there's a director's cut but the final cut is kind of a cleaned up version of everything and they didn't add really any junk into it like they did with some other movies that I'm not gonna name but the original is slower paced and I think it's to its benefit I think that that does serve Blade Runner better the sequel though is absolutely stunning to look at. This is from the same director of Dune and movies like Arrival and Prisoners. It's easily the most stunning movie on this list and probably one of the most stunning movies included with Netflix right now, and the story is really fantastic. There are a few story elements that won't make sense if you did not see the original. However, I do think you could watch these in either order. I think you could watch the second one and then go back and watch the original sort of as a prequel because of the way the stories are set up. But ultimately, I love the look and sound of both of these movies, and I think the story comes through incredibly well in both of them. So, those are my top picks. Let me know in the comments below if there's any additional recommendations. Who knows, one of your recommendations might make it onto a future video. Speaking of recommendations, though, if you want even more recommendations, please go to darrenvandam.com. I've got some recommendations right there on the homepage. Also, check out that Magic Spoon link in the description below. I'm telling you that stuff is fantastic. I really do. I probably have a bowl a couple of nights a week before midnight, and I don't feel guilty about it whatsoever, but I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special Netflix sci-fi episode, and you will see me on the next one.